the kingdom of my divine will in the midst of creatures book of heaven volume 33 part 8 july 20th 1934 everything that comes out of god is all innocent and holy how creation is one act alone of divine will who the triumpher is in the space of the universe. My little intelligence feels the irresistible force of the divine volition that calls it, that wants it in the midst of all creation, to let it see and comprehend the harmony, the order of all created things, and how each of them gives its tribute to its creator. There is not one created thing, be it small or great, destined to occupy the great space of the atmosphere that does not give its distinct tribute to the one who created it. And even though they have no reason and are mute, yet, by never changing their action, by never moving from the place in which God placed them, it is perennial glory. So I was thinking to myself, I too occupy the space of the void of creation, but can I say that I am at my place, wanted by God? Does my human will do always one single act of the will of God, as all creation does? But while I was thinking of this, my beloved Jesus, surprising me, all goodness told me, My blessed daughter, everything that comes out of our supreme being is all innocent and holy, nor could any being or thing with the slightest stain or not containing the utility of a good, ever come out of our sanctity and infinite wisdom? All created things feel in their own nature the creative virtue, and therefore the continuous tribute and the glory that is due to us, because we delivered them out into daylight, and we can do nothing that is stained even slightly, or anything that is useless. So everything that is created by us, everything, is holy, pure, and beautiful. And from all of them do we receive the tribute, and our will its fulfilled act. My daughter, there is not one created thing, be it animate or inanimate, which does not begin its life by fulfilling our will and giving us its tribute. Indeed, the whole creation is nothing other than one act alone of our will. It is already at its royal place, and though unconsciously, Yet it holds its operating life of light in the sun, its operating life of fortitude and might in the wind, operating life of immensity in the immensity of the space. My will carries out its life in each created thing, and holds every one and everything upon its lap in such a way that no one can move or make any motion if it does not want it. And the veils of the created things give us the continuous tribute and the great glory of the great honor that they are dominated by our will. Now comes the creature. Who can say that except for original sin? A newborn baby is not innocent and holy, and once he is baptized, who can say that for a period of his life, until an actual sin enters into his soul, 
the child is not an act of my will. And if he takes a step, if he speaks, if he thinks, if he makes his little hands move, as all these little acts are wanted and disposed by my will, are they not tributes and glory that we receive? They might be unconscious, but my will receives what it wants from that little nature. Sin alone is what makes one lose the sanctity and puts the operating life of my will out of the creature. In fact, if there is no sin, we carry her on our lap. We surround her with our sanctity. And therefore, she will not be able not to feel within herself the operating life of my will. See then, every one and everything takes origin and is born together with my will as innocent, holy, and worthy of the one who created them. But who preserves this innocence and sanctity? One who remains always at her place in my will. She alone is the triumpher in the space of the universe. She carries the flag and reunites the whole army of creation to bring to God with speaking voice and with full knowledge the glory, the honor, and the tribute of everything and of every one. Therefore, it can be said that my will is everything for the creature. The very first act of her being born, as well as the continuation of her preservation. Nor does my will ever leave her, either by way of love, or by way of grace, or by way of operating work, as with one who voluntarily lives and is aware of living in it. And if sin carries her away, not even then does it leave her, but it enwraps her with its dominion, within its punishing justice. So the creature and all things are inseparable from my will. Therefore take to heart my will alone. Recognize it as life, as the mother that raises you and nourishes you, and wants to make of you her greatest glory and honor. Fiat. July 24th, 1934. How God has established all the truths that he must manifest on his divine will. How the divine will bilocates, repeats, and grafts the divine life. How creation has not ended, but continues. I was feeling all immersed in the divine volition, all the truths that had been manifested to me, which regarded it, were crowding my mind, and wanted to speak, and speak again, to make themselves known. But alas, their speaking was of heaven, too high. I lack many of the terms to be able to repeat their celestial lessons. Only, I felt that they were bearers of sanctity of heaven and of divine joys. But while I was feeling all immersed in the fiat, my always lovable Jesus, with an unspeakable love, told me, My little daughter of my will, daughter of it as you are, I feel the need of love for my daughter to know its secrets. If I did not do this often, I would remain drowned by the gigantic waves of love that are unleashed from me. So speaking to you of my will is for me refreshment. It is relief. It is balm, which mitigates my flames so that I may not remain suffocated and burned by my love. 
I am the Jesus, all love, and I manifest my greatest love in speaking about my divine volition. But do you know why? The essence of our life is recognized by the speaking of my will, and in my word, my fiat bilocates and repeats our life in the midst of creatures. Nor is there greater glory for us, or fullness of outpouring of our excessive love, other than in seeing our life bilocated, in order to give itself, graft itself, centralize itself in her as our own dwelling, as much as the creature is capable of. It is one more kingdom of our love and will that we acquire. Therefore our creative work has not ended, but continues, though not by creating new heavens and suns in the universe. No, no. Rather, our divine fiat has reserved for itself to continue the creation by virtue of its creative power. And as it pronounces its fiat of creating, by locating, repeating our divine life in the midst of creatures, there cannot be a more beautiful continuation of creation. Therefore pay attention and listen to me. Our Supreme Majesty has established ab eterno all the truths of the divine will that we have to manifest and they remain like many queens within our divine being, waiting with invincible love to set their way toward the earth, so as to bring, as queens, the great good of these knowledges of our fiat to the creatures. And these will perform the role of teachers in order to form the creatures according to the truths that they announce. These queens, my truths, will give the first kiss of the life of the fiat and will be endowed with transforming virtues, transforming into the truth itself, those who listen to it and remaining with them, ready for their needs, to help them and instruct them. We will be all love for them willing to give them whatever they want, as long as they listen to them and let themselves be guided and handled by them. Now, of all the truths about our will, not all of them have yet come out, and those that are left are anxiously waiting to depart from within our divinity to fulfill their office and be bearers and transformers of the good that they possess. And once all the truths we have disposed to issue are manifested altogether, these noble queens shall assault our divine being, and like an invincible army, with our own divine weapons, they shall conquer us and will obtain the triumph of the kingdom of the divine will upon earth. Resisting them will be impossible to us, and by conquering God, they will also conquer the creatures. This is why my speaking still continues, because not all the queens have come out of our divinity to fulfill their office. And since the speaking about my will is continuation of the creation from the fiat that created the universe, just as then the creation of the universe was preparation for the creation of man, so today is my speaking about my fiat, nothing other than the continuation of creation, to prepare the sumptuousness, the decorum, for my kingdom and for those who shall possess it. Therefore be attentive, and let nothing escape you. Otherwise, 
you would suffocate an act of my will and would force me to repeat my lessons. Biat. August 5th, 1934. Love Story of God. The Creation Enclosed in Man. Sorrowful Notes in the Divine Love. I was doing my round in the acts of the divine will, and going from one work to another, I reached the creation of man. And my sweet Jesus, making me pause with an unspeakable love, such that he could not contain it, told me, My daughter, my love makes me feel the need to speak about the creation of man. Indeed. All creation is pregnant with our love, and it says so, though in a mute language. And if it does not speak, it says it with deeds, and it is the greatest narrator of our love toward man. And when in everything was our love spread out, in such a way that he would not be able to find a single point left uncovered by our love, running toward him and darting through him more than sun when the creation was completed in everything then did we create man but before creating him listen to the story of our love toward him our adorable majesty had established to constitute man king of all creation giving him dominion over everything, and making him the master over all our works. But in order for him to be called a true king, with facts, not just words, he was to possess within himself everything that we had spread out in the creation. Hence, for him to be king of the heavens, of the sun, of the wind, of the sea, and of everything, he was to possess within himself a heaven, a sun, and so forth, in such a way that the creation would be reflected in him, and he, possessing the same qualities, would reflect himself in the creation and be the master of it. In fact, if he did not have an eye full of vision, how could he enjoy the light of the sun and take of it as much as he wanted? If he did not have hands and feet to move around the earth and take whatever the earth produces, how could he call himself king of the earth? If he did not have the respiratory organ, in order to breathe the air, how could he make use of it? And so with all the rest. Therefore, before creating man, we looked at all creation in our emphasis of love, and we exclaimed, How beautiful are our works! But among all, we will make man as the most beautiful we will centralize everything in him in such a way that we will find creation outside and inside of him. And as we kept on molding him, so we enclosed in him the heaven of reason, the sun of the intelligence, the rapidity of the wind in his thought, the expanse of the space, fortitude and empire in his will, motion in his soul, in which we enclosed the sea of graces, the celestial air of our love, and all the senses of the body as the most beautiful flowering. O oh man, how beautiful you are! But not yet satisfied. 
we placed in him the great son of our will and we gave him the great gift of the word so that with deeds and with words he might be the eloquent narrator of his creator he was our image which we delighted in enriching with our most beautiful qualities but not yet satisfied with all this we were taken by such exuberant love toward him that our immensity enveloped him completely everywhere and in each instant our all-seeingness looked at him in all things and deep inside the fibers of his heart our power sustained him carrying him everywhere on our paternal arms our life our motion palpitated in his heartbeat breathed in his breathing operated in his hands walked in his feet and reached the point of making itself footstool under his steps our paternal goodness in order to keep this our dear child safe placed him in the condition of not being able to separate from us nor we from him what else could we do that we did not do this is why we love him so much because he cost us much we dispersed for him our love our power our will and we placed our infinite wisdom in action and we wanted nothing other than he would love us back and that freely he would live in our will and everything and that he would recognize how much we have loved him and done for him these are our loving demands who cruel one would want to deny them to us but alas there are those who want to deny them to us forming their sorrowful notes in our love therefore be attentive and let your flight in our will be continuous after this i continued my round in the creation and incapable of doing anything else i offered to god the expanse of the heavens to adore him the sparkling of the stars as deep genuflections the light of the sun to love him but while i was doing this i thought to myself but the heavens the stars the sun are not animate beings they have no reason how can they do what i want and my beloved jesus always benign added my daughter in order to create the creation our wanted and determined will to create it was needed first and when this our will wanted it so it then converted what it wanted into works so in each created thing there is our will wanted and operating which remained always in the act of wanting and operating therefore by offering to our supreme majesty the heavens the sun and other things one offers not the material and superficial thing that can be seen but the very wanted and operating will of god present inside each created thing and if they have no reason there is a divine reason inside and a wanted and operating will of god that animates everything and by offering them to us one offers the greatest act the holiest will 
the most beautiful works, not interrupted, but continuous, in which there are the most profound adorations, the love most perfect, the greatest glory that the creature can give us by means of our will, wanted and operating in all creation. And if the heavens, the stars, the sun, the wind, do not understand anything, my will and yours understand the way we want to make use of them, and that is enough. Fiat September 24th, 1934 How one who lives in the divine will becomes a member of it and acquires the inseparability with all the works of her creator. I feel as if I were swimming within the immense abyss of the divine will, and since I am too little, I go about taking, and I can manage to take but tiny little drops of it, and the few I take remain inside of me as well as inseparable from the supreme fiat. And they make me feel the inseparability with it and with all of its acts. O oh, divine will, you love so much one who lives in you that you do not want to do anything, nor can you do anything, without engaging the one who already lives in you. The ardor of your love is so great as to say, What I do, you too must do, as you live in me. It seems to me that you would render yourself unhappy if you were not able to do and say, What the creature does, I do. What I do, she does as well. But while my mind was wandering within it, and I felt the strong bonds of its inseparability, my sweet Jesus, repeating his little visit to my soul, told me, My little daughter of my will, you must know that for one who lives in my will, her inseparability from it is such and so great that there is nothing it does, either in heaven or in all creation, without letting one who lives in it take part in it. Just as the body possesses the inseparability with its members, and whatever one member does, all other members centralize themselves in the members that operates. They are aware of everything, and all of them participate. In the same way, one who lives in my will becomes a member of it, and as though naturally, on both sides, they feel this inseparability, and whatever one does, the other does as well. Hence, my volition in heaven makes all happy. It beatifies. With its smiles of love, it enchants the whole celestial court, and makes all feel unheard of joys while on earth, with one who lives in its will, it carries out its operating life, it sanctifies, it fortifies, and acting as her conqueror, it makes in her as many conquests, or as many acts, heartbeats, words, thoughts, and steps as she does in it. Now heaven, the blessed feel and take part in the operating and conquering life that my will carries out on earth in the souls who live in it. They feel the inseparability of their acts, breaths, and heartbeats, and the happiness of my conquering will. Therefore they feel the new joys, the beautiful surprises that my conquering fiat knows how to give in the creatures. And since these are conquests of a divine will, the blessed who already live of it 
feel as conquerors of its gifts and works. And oh, how many new seas of happiness they enjoy. And behold, heaven feels inseparable, even from the breaths of the creature who lives in my will on earth. And the creature, by virtue of it, feels the inseparability with the joys and happinesses of heaven. The peace of the saints is hers. The firmness and confirmation in good convert into her very nature. She feels the life of heaven flow within her members more than blood inside her veins. Everything is inseparable for one who lives in my will, inseparable from the heavens, from the sun, from the whole of creation. There is nothing that can separate from her. It seems that everyone and everything say to her, We are inseparable from you. My very pains that I suffered on earth, my life, my works, say to her, We are yours. They surround her. They invest her. They take the place of honor, and they bind themselves to her with inseparable bonds. And here is how the creature who lives in my will feels always little, because feeling the inseparability with so many works of mine, of my love, great and innumerable, from my light and sanctity. She is the true tiny little one in the midst of all of my works. But fortunate little one, loved by all, as she reaches the point of giving beautiful new conquests and new joys to heaven. Therefore, if you want everything, live always in my will, and you will feel as the happiest creature. Fiat. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 33, Part 8. Fiat.